The Tribal Health and Human Services Department of the Confederated Salish and Kootenai Tribes is proud to present Good Medicine, a program dedicated to the wellness of the Flathead Nation. The mission is summarized quite simply, a healthier people, a stronger nation. We will strive to make Good Medicine a reliable source of ideas and information about health issues so that everyone can make informed decisions about their own lifestyle and health care. You'll meet health professionals, tribal government and spiritual leaders, and interesting people from the tribal community discussing important health issues that profoundly affect us all. Hello, this is Good Medicine. I'm your host, Larry Pitts, and today we have a good friend of mine, Lester Big Crane. And Lester, I want to thank you for coming aboard. And Lester is the uh, Work Project Coordinator and the Acting Program Manager for the Wildland Rec uh, Program through uh, Land Services. Natural Resources, Natural Resources Department. Right. He moved, got moved up to the Security State Bank, uh, Montana Mission Valley Power Building up in Polson now. Yes. And so I know you got a new location, and that, that's pretty new and up and coming. So what we want to talk about today, viewing audience, is um, we're going to talk about the Mission Mountain Tribal Wilderness 20th anniversary celebration coming up. And so, Lester, you want to talk about that just a little bit to get started, and then we'll go from there and talk about your department after that. So, Sure, Larry. Um, this uh, June 15th uh, is the 20th anniversary of the Mission Mountain Mountains Tribal Wilderness. And on Friday, this coming Friday, we're planning to have a celebration up at Mission Dam Recreation Area okay. east of St. Ignatius. Mm -hmm. It'll begin at 1 o'clock. We'll have, um, we plan on having a picnic lunch. Um, Kicking Horse Job Corps is going to be bringing us some hamburgers and hot dogs and salads. So bring, are you, you going to bring the chef Bob Camel in for that? Bob is the one preparing it. All right, that's a little <laughs> scary. Going to have a chef cooking then. <laughs> and we'll have the food there, and right afterwards we'll have uh, speakers. Um, we're trying to get um, coverage of a uh, little bit of historical um, information from some of the people who were on tribal council or some of the elders or some of the people in the community who are all part of uh, setting up um, and helping establish the tribal wilderness. Um, we have speakers uh, such as Fred Matt, the tribal chairman, Mm -hmm. um, Tom McDonald, our, he's been the, our program manager for the last 13 years and the, manages the tribal wilderness. Uh, uh, Dr. Joseph McDonald. Uh, the doc. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And Tony Incasola from the, the Culture Committee, uh, Lucy Vandenberg, People Center, Pat Pierre. And we also hope to have an open mic session to allow uh, people uh, so we don't leave anybody out and other people who might have been instrumental in helping out um, can come in and give their uh, two cents mm -hmm. and speak and you know I think it's I just plan on it being a nice uh, family community event where we can you know it's going to be the weather is we put in a request for a nice weather I think it's supposed to be up in the 80s and mm -hmm. you know Mission Dam is probably the best uh, site that we can get a lot of people at and um, you know nice outdoor picnic and have uh, speakers everybody can community can get together and enjoy themselves and uh, learn a little bit about our history and our past and especially the Mission Mountains it's something that's very important to a lot of us. Mm -hmm. So, you know, going back, you know, to the, um, the ruling, you know, June 15th, 1982, mm -hmm. that's when they made the decision to make this into a wilderness area. Mm -hmm. And uh, why had, what has significance has that made to our reservation as, as the director of this program? What do you, how do you see that? 
the, the wilderness was established, I guess, it was important for our program because the, as the people were, the tribal council and other members of the uh, public, tribal members and community were um, discussing all this, uh, it came about to set up the wildland recreation program to help um, manage the area and uh, write a management plan, mm -hmm. take care, be caretakers, uh, the tribal program to take care of uh, the Mission Mountain. Mission Mountains Tribal Wilderness. It is the first uh, wilderness area established by a Indian tribe in the United States mm -hmm. uh, by a wilderness area established by the tribe. Right. And uh, it's something that is uh, at the time, I guess even now we, from what I've read and the people I've talked to, that around that time there were a lot of issues happening. There was kind of a lot of conservation movement going around mm -hmm. in the 70s. Uh, I need to drink water. That's fine. That's fine. Well, as, as you're you know, going on that, I, I know that our tribe is considered one of the hot, you know most environmentally sound tribes mm -hmm. in the country. We're highly looked upon about our environmental decisions. Mm -hmm. And this was one of the first decisions that really caught the attention throughout Indian country. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, going in as, as the director um, and, you know, and growing up on the reservation, I mean, what did it mean to you? I mean, I didn't realize for a long time who took care of the trails. Mm -hmm. And so go on that a little bit, would you, Lester? Okay. Um, I'm going to have to edit that. <laughs> that's fine. No, that's fine. If I could just uh, maybe go back and finish that yeah. a little bit, what I was talking mm -hmm. about. Or Roy's going to edit all this, right? So I can take <laughs> another drink yeah, and not worry right. about it. That's fine. I wouldn't worry about it anyway. Because I get very dry when I'm talking. Okay. <clears throat> Going back to the tribal wilderness and its establishment. Uh, back in the 70s, there was a conservation push happening around. Uh, in the area, and a lot of it was because of uh, development or um, um, I guess the request to develop areas mm -hmm. um, on the reservation um, Over proposals such as on the Flathead River, these mm -hmm. putting dams on the river, and we had pipelines going in, um, power lines going in and uh, all activities like that, and they, um, in 1974 was when the South Fork Primitive Area was established. Okay. And around 1975, uh, the, the wilderness area, the federal wilderness on the other side, if people don't know, the both sides of the Mission Mountains and the front side and the back side of wilderness. Our side is the tribal wilderness and the back side is uh, the federal wilderness, mm -hmm. and uh, that was around 1975 that was established. And uh, so there were a lot of things happening in the area in, in that time period, and, and actually around 77, 78, there was um, proposals to log part of the missions of the Ashley Creek area. Mm -hmm. That kind of got a lot of people a little bit excited about that happening, you know, we look at, you know, it's areas that we look at every day, you know, mm -hmm. in this valley and uh, we had a lot of concerns by um, community members. And uh, so that was uh, the, how the, how things got rolling on there, mm -hmm. tribal council and community. And we had a member, uh, Thurman Trosper, who right. was, who was uh, part of the Wilderness Society and uh, and so all together, you know, it was a big, it was a big um, community effort to try and get mm -hmm. the area protected and established as a wilderness area. So over the years, they constituted the, uh, they contracted the Wilderness Institute out of the University of Montana to um, do a study. They, and I think back then, they went, set up areas on the trails and, uh, 
interviewed people and mm -hmm. did an in inventory of all the sites and uh, um, ended up forming our program, then writing a management plan. Mm -hmm. And again, that was on June 15th, 1982, when that was established. And all that, um, you know, I, it is something that we have heard, you know, through our program and throughout the tribe, our professionals and the natural resources and the tribal council hear that, you know, that people out there nationally know that about our tribal wilderness and that, you know, we're kind of one of the forerunners in the, in the nation of, um, you look at throughout our whole reservation and the, and the protected areas that we have on the reservation, we have the wilderness area and uh, primitive areas and mm -hmm. we're managing the river corridor and we have little money and the uh, ferry basin conservation area as a, a nine mile divide as a roadless area mm -hmm. on there. Man. So we have a lot of natural resources and, um, and we just uh, have again been one of the forerunners in trying to protect uh, those areas and, and perpetuity for all people, the benefit of all people. Right, and, and, and that's what the thing, you know, wildland, wildland rec means that it's a controlled recreation. Mm -hmm. And you know, the department, how many employees do you have within your department? Within our program, mm -hmm. the wildland recreation program, we have um, um, three full-time staff members we have and, and six um, seasonal employees. Mm -hmm. Right now, most of them are all up there at Mission Dam. They've been working hard the last um, couple of weeks and trying to get that place all nice and spiffed up and mowed and that. And it's look, I just came back from there today and it's looking really good. Mm -hmm. Plus we have all, we have, uh, during the summer we bring on, we try and bring on at least um, five to 10 summer youth employees mm -hmm. and career track students who like, I like to get them in the, we always like to get them in the program and you know to help learn more about the area and mm -hmm. uh, the resources and uh, you know, taking care of it. I think they learn pretty fast on <laughs> um, taking care of areas and they have to do it hands on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when they swing at Pulaski, all of a sudden it's like, wow, this is a little tougher. Yeah, when they're picking up garbage or mm -hmm. picking up after people, then they usually don't leave a mess themselves. But right. So we have all those. Uh, employees. Uh, Terry Tanner, he is the um, right now the lead technician mm -hmm. and he's um, we have one vacant position. Tom McDonald was our program manager and he has been promoted to the division manager Okay. Uh, fish, wildlife, recreation and conservation and like I said we have one Blue Bay campground attendant and five seasonal workers. You know, and, and that's the whole thing. I mean people are as I, I go around the reservation, it's really hard to conceptualize sometimes what it takes to run the Blue Bay Center, mm -hmm. you know, what it takes to manage the uh, wilderness area up in the missions, mm -hmm. ferry basin, the river corridor. I mean, there's a lot to manage. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if you had your wish list, you know, what would it take, do you think, to really to cover this area the way that you would like to see it? I mean, I, I'm sure you would like to see more employees. <laughs> um, I think that's all, yeah, it's all part of it, having enough um, resources available for us to mm -hmm. get out there and manage uh, new activities as much as everybody would like it, you know. We've, for our program, we've got, you know, th th it's grown quite a bit mm -hmm. in the last year, so from when I first started, there was four of us full time, that was about it. Mm -hmm. And we also do get a lot of volunteers here and there, right. but we do have about 40 recreation sites throughout the reservation mm -hmm. from the lake to the primitive areas of the um, reservoir campgrounds and mm -hmm. so through all, through all the whole reservation. So there's quite a few and um, plus doing the trails, doing the trail work out there mm -hmm. and construction projects and maintenance projects. There's a lot of activities. The summers are a really busy time. And mm -hmm. yeah, I think we've been um, 
the last couple of years been uh, pretty happy with uh, having more people to, to do that and try and uh, take care of the, all now, that for everybody. Are you guys required to do the bridges also, or does that come from someplace else? And, um, you know, because there's places oh, yeah. where the trails require bridges across the streams. And yeah, we've we've done just about everything. That's the one thing I um, I think everybody who's worked for our program mm -hmm. that, that I, as long as I've been there, yeah, that's one thing they it all I've always did enjoyed about the job is that it's so diverse that we have. It's usually not the same thing every day. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, one day we can be up in the missions, another day we'll be out doing a fencing job, and another day we could be uh, mowing grass or weed eating, and mm -hmm. another day helping wildlife or fisheries program, you know, mm -hmm. on a helicopter flight or a boat. Um, some days we have to pump toilets, and some days we have to. Um, um, we've built bridges up in the South Fork and um, over the canals and uh, foot bridges, uh, vehicle bridges, and built a South Fork gate mm -hmm. cabin a couple of years back. So you guys have to be really capable. Yeah, it's good <laughs> to be. Jackson Ultra is. Yeah, it's good to have a lot of different backgrounds. Yeah. Well, Lester, we're well over halfway done with our program right now, so we're going to take a quick PSA break here with Chef Cram Care on Healthy Living, uh, which is being presented by the Flathead Diabetic Project. So, viewing audience, don't go away. We'll be right back with Lester Big Crane, and uh, this is Larry Pitts and saying, don't go away. Hello, here's another fruit and vegetable recipe for better health. You know, spring is that time when kids start turning up for sports, baseball, soccer, track, tennis. I mean, they all start about now, don't they? And that means that young athletes need extra energy from healthy snacks. Now, how about a sports mix made up by combining a quarter of a cup each of raisins, dried cranberries, sour cherries, and apricots? Terrific. And then three quarters of a cup of a whole grain breakfast cereal and a quarter of a cup of nuts. Then all you have to do is just stir them all up together and get one of these small resealable bags and just pop in a half cup. Now, each bag contains a high energy serving of fruit. And even better, you know, the fruit helps their bodies fight off disease. Now, for more quick ideas, call 1-800-4-CANCER. So go on. Do yourself and your family a favor and enjoy your five to nine servings of fruit and vegetables every single day. Mm. Mm. Oh, energy. We're back from that short PSA with Chef Graham Care. I hope you learned a lot, and we want to thank the Flathead Diabetic Project for those. And uh, we're back with Lester Big Crane, and we're talking about the Mission Mountain Tribal Wilderness 20th Anniversary Celebration. Now, let's go over that again. It's going to be June 15th. 14th. 14th. 1 o'clock up at Mission Dam Campsites. And yeah. um, Bobby Campbell is going to be bringing stuff from Job Corps, cooking food. Yep. And uh, what kind of food are we having? Um, it's going to be barbecue style, hamburgers, hot dogs, salad, um, and juice, I think. Uh, we should have drinks there. Uh, it sounds like fire control is uh, going to donate us some Gatorade and water. And, mm -hmm. and uh, So what are the other activities we're going to have along with this? Um, we're going to have our guest speakers with who we went over, anybody else? Yeah. Oh, we have... Like uh, your family? <laughs> <laughs> I had to uh, twist a few arms about we're getting the big crane singers to come up there and uh, sing for us. And uh, if I can twist my other brother's arm, and if you're watching, uh, <laughs> um, my brother James will mm -hmm. play the flute. Uh, we'll mix that all in with uh, the speakers that we're having. Again, we have some guest speakers, and we'll also have an open mic, you know, to allow mm -hmm. for other people who want to share their uh, experiences or thoughts or wishes or uh, whatever is on their mind. Um, hopefully, just pertaining to the, the wilderness area. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have an open mic session. 
the public is welcome. Everybody is uh, welcome. We'll have signs uh, showing how to get there for those not familiar. Okay. Uh, parking will be limited, though. That, you know, that's not a lot of parking out there. So we're hoping people will carpool right. and uh, make it a little bit easier. The, it's kind of a one-lane road there for a while. Also, initially we started um, wanted to have this activity as the as the kind of the end of year, end of uh, year long activities, but we've kind of turned that around, and we're going to have this as the kind of a kickoff of a hopefully a year long celebration and okay. um, commemorating the wilderness uh, establishment. So we're hoping to put on some wilderness conferences uh, in the fall. Mm -hmm. And along with this, um, this event too, we also want to have a logo contest. And I'll be getting the details. Hope hopefully I'll have all the details at, the, uh, at Mission Dam on Friday. Mm -hmm. So we're going to try and get a 20th anniversary logo and you know, something that we can yeah, you, know, um, you know, put on T-shirts or mm -hmm. more or now, whatever. Now, for those tribal employees, do we have a change of work site that day? <laughs> uh, as a matter of fact, <laughs> yes, we do. Mm -hmm. The tribal council has generously um, allowed the tribal employees to attend and uh, attend the event on Friday afternoon, and also we're also open to. Our program uh, is kind of coordinating everything, so we're also open to um, getting help from people. Anybody who wants to help out uh, can give me a call at the tribal complex, and uh, I'll, you know, be glad to work with them. Mm -hmm. So you do need some volunteers for this. So what's that number at the tribal complex they can hold you at? They can call the Pablo office six seven five twenty seven hundred. Or our new office in Polson is 883-2888. Okay. And, uh, you know, we are looking for volunteers for, it's going to be this coming Friday. Yeah. It, just, it's not a whole lot, but there's oh, going to be some office. helping up, you know, mm -hmm. setting up. We're going to have chairs and tables and uh, we're going to put up a little stage and mm -hmm. Terry's going to put up a couple teepees and we're going to have a stage there. and. Uh, um, we have somebody coming in with a PA system and, um, you know, that mainly crowd control. Right. Uh, um, and traffic for control. traffic control. Right. Yeah, so giving directions and traffic control and helping people out. Well, it sounds like it's going to be a, a really good time. Now, one question I was going to hit you earlier was uh, Dave Rockwell had something to do in the past on this whole process. What did he have to do with this? Oh, Dave Rockwell, he was... Uh, Initially, he worked. Uh, I think I believe he was. Um, uh, Dave Rockwell will be there at uh, <laughs> at Mission Dam. Okay. We can. He can be there. If I get this wrong, he'll tell me. And uh, if anybody's interested, they can go and talk to him directly too right. about this. But Dave Rockwell um, was part of the initial group that studied, uh, did the study on the wilderness and the proposal, and. He was contracted by the tribe to, uh, as our program was established, uh, to uh, write the management plan mm -hmm. for the wilderness and to train the first program manager mm -hmm. of the wildland recreation program, which was Herschel Mays. Mm -hmm. So now, now, where does the funding come for your whole project, for your program that you're running right now? Our funding comes from uh, the tribal, the tribal budget, mm -hmm. and part of it comes. Uh, part of our activities are working uh, with the, through the Kerr uh, mm -hmm. mitigation. Right. Um, we do some of our activities on we've been, which we've been doing lately up on the on the lake. Uh, increased fishing accesses and opportunities on mm -hmm. on the lake under the guides of the Flathead Lake Co Management Plan. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Yeah. Well, Lester, you've done great today, and um, you know it's 
It's going to be a great celebration on Friday, June 14th at 1 o'clock up at Mission Dam. You know, come out viewing audience. It's going to be a good time. The weather's going to be great. I've already seen the mm -hmm. extended forecast. It's mm -hmm. supposed to be in the 80s. So uh, let me encourage everybody, travel employees, we have been uh, granted a ch change of duty site, which is awesome. Thank you, Tribal Council. My last question for you, and this is, the, this is a hard, this is a thinker. There's a rumor going around the reservation right now. There's a big rumor. Mm -hmm. And that rumor is that... Rumors around the reservation? Yeah, and what oh. it is, it, it says that you're going to become the new Chicago Bulls head basketball coach. While you're thinking about that, I want to thank the viewing audience for watching today. This is Larry Pitt <laughs> saying have a great day and uh, see you next week. Good Medicine is your program. We hope you watch this and subsequent programs to stay informed about your health care. And we'd like to hear from you about how we're doing. Please direct any comments or suggestions you have to us. You can reach us at... The kind of child care this little guy gets means a lot for his future and ours. Quality child care means children enter school ready to learn. It means working parents don't face a struggle between their jobs and caring for their children. But millions of parents can't find or afford quality child care. Congress is deciding now whether to make more child care available. He can't call Washington, but you can. So call your senators. Tell them our children's future depends on quality child care.